Welcome to Game Time. Your Sunday crew here, Chris Miles, Candace Parker, Greg Anthony. Hmm, Candace, looks like you're wearing Lakers colors tonight. Don't put that rumor out there, Chris. <laughs> I am unbiased. I'm mm. just sitting here trying to wonder if it's mm. because of LeBron's birthday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's for LeBron's birthday. Yeah, there we go. We're going to move on from there. Our first game of the night came down to the wire. Rookie sensation Luka Doncic had to lead his Mavericks against two superstars, Russell Westbrook and PG-13. That's Paul George. How about a Smitty under the rim oh, nominee? Oh, PG. That was some water on the floor. Is that that see, happened? right there. Water. It That's water. The, it wasn't the move. Paul George makes that water under the bridge when he starts making plays like this. Scale of 1 to 10, what do you give this in a dunk contest? I'm going 8, 9. You're a tough critic. Yeah, well, I've seen PG do better, but that was impressive. Also impressive, fourth quarter, Luka Doncic all season. Oof. Gives the Mavericks a three-point lead. I'm a lead. believer. I'm a believer. Luca, bad boy. Well, you should believe in Paul George as oh, well. Oh, my goodness. That's the response. Thunder take the lead. You might not want to go under the screen against PG. I'll tell you what, that is a tough shot, though. He shot that with a lot of confidence. 36 for Paul George. Thunder up by six. How about another Diesel Dunks nominee? Oh! Oh, my goodness. Did, was that a PG 13 or R rated? Because I'm trying to figure out why. Hmm. Maybe NC-17 Yeah, after that one. Good call. Don't know if you want to watch that too often. Dennis Smith Jr. looking for Luka Doncic, then takes it himself, and the Mavericks take the lead. Heads up play, Candace. Very heads up play. Last game had a layup, didn't quite go down. Today under control, gets the layup to go. So the Mavericks up by one. The shot Paul George wants doesn't get it to go. He knocks that down eight out of ten times, but obviously Dennis Smith Jr. stepping up, knocking down the shot at one end and getting the defense to stop on the other. Down two, Russell Westbrook goes for three. No bueno. Nine points for him. Four for 22 from the field. 0 for 8 from three-point range. Had he made that one, we wouldn't be talking about that stat line. We'd be talking about an OKC win. Instead, here's Dennis Smith following a Dallas victory. Dennis, you had 14 points, but more so than that, the big go-ahead bucket and the defensive stand on Paul George. Let's start with the layup. Take us through that play and what you were thinking. Uh, I was just trying to get downhill initially. I seen the time, uh, and I figured we, we might could go for a two-for-one and possibly take the lead, so I, I tried to get, there, get down there as soon as possible. They did a good job of cutting it off initially. Uh, my second time going, it was open, and I made a layup. Well, this year, it's been noticeable. You know, you missed the games, but you've been much better on defense this year, and we saw it on that final possession with Paul George. What were you thinking as that was going down? Um, just, just trying to uh, earn my respect in this league. He had scored. He had got a free throw on me, uh, three free throws, and I told him, <laughs> stop flopping. And then he told me he was going to get a straight-up bucket on me. And, uh, you know, last play, I just told him I ain't no one to ISO. And then that, that's what it is. I mean, that's tough because that's a 6'8 guy with a high release point, but you, you stayed with him and, and contested the shot. Were you trying to force him in any particular direction? Um, not really. I was just trying to make him uncomfortable. You know, I didn't really want him settling into his moves. Uh, just jab at the ball as much as possible. If I get a hand on it, uh, you know, that's extra, but I just want to make him uncomfortable. You're a comf uh, confident dude in general. Are you more confident now than you've ever been? It seems like things are kind of coming easy to you. Um, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. Uh, my main thing right now is just going out and playing as hard as possible. And I feel like uh, if I do that, you know, I'll get some good karma. Just, just, just trying to make myself tired of play as hard as I can. You had some big games around this time last year. What's it like to have to go play Oklahoma City again tomorrow night, second night of a back-to-back? -back? Uh, it should be a lot of fun. We just played each other tonight. Uh, we got the win. I'm sure they're going to come out fired up. We got to come out and match the energy on the road, and we want to look, look to turn around our uh, road record. So Luka Doncic is shooting 54% in clutch situations this season in that final play or one of the final plays for the Dallas Mavericks when Dennis Smith scored. It was Luka being a decoy there and causing a lot of um, distractions for that defense in giving Dennis Smith the opportunity to score. Well, I think everybody in that arena knew who the ball was going to go to. And, you know, OKC was scrambling defensively, obviously, in transition. Dennis Smith Jr. under, com under control had composure down the stretch, brought the ball back out, hesitated, nobody guarded him, and he got a free layup to the basket. 
Yeah, I, I thought that Dallas played more like the veteran team. It was really the mistakes that were made by OKC down the stretch. The unforced turnovers that they had that led to live ball scores for OK or for Dallas. And then that last play with Dennis Smith, just the miscommunication defense. They were in scramble mode. They weren't communicating. And Dennis Smith Jr. made them pay with a huge basket. And OKC got the two looks they wanted from the two guys they wanted it from. Paul George and Russell Westbrook in the final minute. That's what you want, right? You, you want that, but you also don't want the two turnovers those two guys had down the stretch. Remember, it was George who tried to cross it over in traffic, turned it over. And then also Russell trying to get the ball to Paul George, threw it away, live ball turnover as well. That shot is fine. You're going to live with that. You're not going to design a play to get a better look against a set defense than the one he got there. This one's tough because there wasn't a lot of time. Credit uh, Dallas again for at least forcing a tough contested shot, not allowing anything easy there down the stretch. And Dallas continues to play lights out basketball at home. The question is, can they figure out their issues on the road? They're going to get a chance against that same OKC team. Well, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be rocking the 77 Dodgers jersey, I must say. Um, you know, he's been a huge bright spot just in terms of the type of shots that he's been taking down the stretch. And we'll see if he can take that on the road and, and get some victories for the Mavericks. Certainly making a huge impact early on in his career. LeBron James' teams have not performed well in his absence. In fact, when he's been sidelined, his teams have not won without him since 2016. That includes the Lakers' last two games. He's been sidelined with a groin injury. Lakers look to snap that streak against the Sacramento Kings on Sunday. And Lance Stevenson giving LeBron a reason to celebrate on his birthday. You know, Lance is the one we're used to seeing dance, but how about this move by LeBron? Air guitar. Air guitar. You can get a tech for that. Didn't Lance get a text for that for the air guitar? Maybe he wants to play that again for Josh Hart. Lexan. Season high, 22 points for him. How about a Smitty's under the rim nominee? Ooh. Oh, nice. Ball faking. Call Brandon Stein Ingram. went for it. Watch his, watch his head. Oh, oh he, man, he <laughs> went for the okie doke. The hand, the headband bros. Oh, not just in goodness. Philly. The Kings take the lead though. Buddy Buckets living up to the name. And Bogdan Bogdanovich hit a game winner earlier in the week. Woo! That should be from four point range. <laughs> De'Aaron Fox, three the hard way, 26 and seven for him in Sacramento, ahead by four in the fourth quarter. Ooh, that was a nice move. That should be a nominee right there for yeah. Smitty's under the rim. Two in one game for Brandon Ingram, 21 points, nine assists, seven rebounds. Incredible I, performance. I thought one of his best all-around games on the entire season. He, he really, and he was clutch as well for the Lakers. So was Contavious Caldwell Pope and Josh Hart. Lakers finished the game on an 18-4 run. So that losing streak of teams while LeBron James sit out comes to an end. They win 121-114. Kawhi Leonard make it look easy against the Chicago Bulls, but it was the Raptors defense that truly prevailed. We'll take a look around the East next. You're watching Game Time. Russell Westbrook gets the look in the corner for the win. Four for 22 from the field, 0 for 8 from three-point range. In Dallas, they win their just their second game in the last nine tries, getting some clutch plays from Luka Doncic, DeAndre Jordan, and Dennis Smith. That's a growth victory for them. It, absolutely. And listen, they have been really good at home. They're having their struggles right now, closing these kinds of games out on the road. And so that's going to be the next step. I, I really feel like this team could be a playoff team this year. I mean, they remember, no West Matthews tonight, who is obviously going to be a big part of what they do. Harrison Barnes, you know, he's proven that he can score. Luka Doncic has shown you that he is their best player. So they're going to have a chance, I think, to make the postseason. They're going to be in that conversation. When you look at those teams anywhere from 6 to 12, and if I'm Dallas, I feel like we're every bit as good, and why can't we get there? And bringing over DeAndre Jordan also is paying big dividends. I think it also says a lot that your best player on your team is a rookie. And a lot of times it takes a team a long time to adjust to a player coming in, that young being the best player. And you see players like Harrison Barnes, you see Dennis Smith Jr. 
sacrificing their game a little bit and playing off of Doncic. And you don't see that a lot um, in terms of, I mean, obviously the caliber of player that Luka, um, you know, he commands it. But I do agree with you. I think they'll figure things out uh, on the road, and they are going to be uh, in the playoffs. I, I mean, they, they've got the worst road record in the entire league, 2-15. and 15. And to your point, the thing that makes it great for them is he's earned it. Like, they respect his ability because they see it every day in practice. And you know how it is when you – that's where it starts. In practice, when you're out there with a guy, when you see his grasp of the game and how he plays it, his understanding of it, he's not your typical rookie. He is age-wise, but those three years he spent as a professional overseas have paid huge dividends for him and that Mavericks franchise. And certainly for Dallas, they know – Okay, Luca's going to get the ball in clutch situations, and you saw that payoff there. Dennis Smith Jr. looking around for Luca gets a wide open layup at the end of that game. But for OKC, they got two looks. Paul George probably the better quality look. Russ Westbrook relatively open in the corner as well. Your two best players get those shots you want. Well, in terms of Paul George, I mean, obviously playing against a, a smaller defender gets to a spot. He's known for knocking down that elbow jump shot eight or nine out of ten times. So I don't have a problem with that. They changed up their set a little bit after the timeout, got Russell a look in the corner, but obviously with him shooting four for 22 from the field, I mean, Russell's the type of player where that that shot goes in just because he's Russell Westbrook and he's going to continue to to hunt those shots, and he usually finds his rhythm towards the end of the game. But, you know, I mean, they've, they've won 10 road games this season, leads the league in, in road wins this season, and they've picked up defensively. So, I mean, OKC is going to be extremely yeah. scary in the playoffs. Yeah, but they, to me, they, they lost this game. They, their two best players both had a critical turnover down the stretch of that game. Paul George had the turnover off the crossover in traffic, and then Westbrook with trying to find George coming off that – uh, that screen over the top threw the ball away. Those are two live ball turnovers that Dallas was able to convert and score. And, and those are the plays you can't have, especially on the road in that kind of environment. So they're going to kick themselves more for those missed opportunities and the fact that they were able to give up points in transition on the other end. Winning on the road so hard around the NBA and Philadelphia 